using trigonometric ratios to find length. And so, Katoa, here's how we're going to do it. First of all, let's think about your ratios. When you have a over b equals c over d, this is called a proportion because you got two equal ratios. How do you solve for a? Here's a little trick. A is equal to b c over d. B c over d. And see if you can follow the pattern. What would b be? So b would be a times d over c. A times d over c. Now I want you to stop this video and see if you can follow the pattern to tell how do you get c and d. Go ahead. C and D. Well, it looks like what you do is you look for whatever's direct diagonally across, and that goes dividing. So B goes dividing, and the other two numbers will go multiplying. A times D. So D, what's across from D? A is across from D, diagonally across. So then that's A goes at the bottom, and it's B times C. Why is it good for us? What well, is how we can use it? We can say, if you're swapping for C, diagonally across, I've got 3. So then I can say 3 goes dividing, and this would be 8 times 14. 8 times 14 is equal to, and I think my answer over here is 37.33. Okay, what if you have this? You don't have a proportion. Well, 8 over x equals 10. If it's equals 10, it's kind of like it equals 10 over 1. So if I pretend there's a 1 there, I can do some trick. And the 10 goes dividing, and 8 times 1 goes multiplying. So 8 times 1 is just 8 divided by 10. This is equal to 0 0.8. Okay? This trick will be used for us for when we're solving for the trigonometric ratios. So make sure you understand that one. Quick, um, quick story here, how to prove Pythagorean theorem. Well, I got this one. It's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's 3 by 8. So I'm going to create four triangles inside this square which is 11 by 11 and let's see what happens so four equal triangles inside two equal squares now as you can see this is like my B that's my A and that's my C Actually, this is all my c's, so this is really c squared. Or actually, I'm not doing c. My mistake. I'm using h. So this is h squared. What if I create this triangles over here? But instead of putting them in that direction, I put them side by side. And then I create another one. Just like that. Well, the nice thing about this is that the short side was a, which was 3, so this is a squared. And the long straight side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is b. Therefore, this is b squared. And what you can see is that since these two guys are, these two squares are equal to each other, and I got four triangles, is that a squared plus b squared is equal to h squared which is a Pythagorean theorem. A very nice, clean way to, to prove it. So there's our formula. a squared plus b squared is equal to h squared. Now, h has to be the hypotenuse. And as you know, the hypotenuse is the, the side that's across from the right angle or the longest side. We are going to always put a circle around the hypotenuse when we do our calculations. So let's, this one, 3 and 6 and b b happens to be the hypotenuse. It does not call h, actually one of the b's over here, so it gets confusing, but basically the, the number that's on the hypotenuse, that goes alone. So I've got, I'm gonna write it the other way around, I'm gonna say that b squared is equal to three squared plus six squared. Now this works out to nine plus 36, and it's b squared. And now b is equal to the square root of 9 plus 36 is 45. And therefore, b is equal to 6.71. I don't have any units, so I'm just going to keep it at 
What about on this side? Well, this is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to put a circle around that. I'm going to say that 10 squared is equal to 2 squared plus c squared, right? Just p note that for the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse is not always the, the the missing side. If I have another side, well, that goes on the on this side where you got the two. Do you know what these are called? These are called these are called the hypotenuse, and the a and the b are called the legs of a triangle. All right, so this is a hundred. This two squared becomes four. So it's going to go to the other side as minus four is equal to c squared. So therefore, it's going to be the square root of ninety six. That's going to give me the value for c. And the square root of 96 is approximately 9.8. Also don't have any units, so this is where I'm going to stop. And that's my Pythagorean theorem. Okay, let's talk about the trigonometric ratios. Triangles that are have a right angle on them have a hypotenuse, which is always a hypotenuse. And we can tell because it's across from the right angle or the longest side. But the names of the other two sides change depending on what angle is it that we're talking about. For example, if I'm talking about angle A, well, I know that the hypotenuse will always be the hypotenuse. So C was the hypotenuse. But A is right across, therefore that's going to be the opposite side. And B, which is right beside it, beside it means adjacent, or adjacent means beside it. So that's the one. That same triangle, if I were to be talking about B, the hypotenuse would always be the hypotenuse. But the side right across from B, it's going to be the opposite. And now B is the opposite. It used to be the adjacent, but because I'm talking about B, B is the opposite. And side A, which is right beside it, if I put my finger on it, I should touch two sides, the hypotenuse and the adjacent. How do we use this? Here are the three trigonometric ratios. And we remember the say Sokatoa. Sine of theta. This symbol is theta and it's just, just kind of like an X for an angle. Sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. We just use that Sokatoa thing to remember what these ratios are, what the formulas are, so not to get confused. How do we actually use them? It's coming up on the next slide. But what type of element are they? Are they line, point, segment, angle, etc.? So the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse, they are all sides or segments. Right? Theta is actually an angle. But what is it, sine theta or cos theta? or tan of theta. That is actually a ratio. So it doesn't have any units. It's just a side divided by another side. It's just a number. And that number could be bigger than one, or it could be very large for tangent, but for sine and cos, it can only go up to one. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, finally get to solve a problem. These are the steps that we want to follow. We state the info we have and the info that we're looking for, three items. So on this triangle, what do we have? Well, I have an angle. And I call that theta. I have uh, this side 12, which is the hypotenuse, right? Because it's across from the right angle. So I got the hypotenuse. And I'm looking for C. And C, because I've got this angle, C is the adjacent. Okay, B, state the formula of the trig ratio you will use. Well, which formula has H and A? H and A is here for cosine. So I'm just going to write cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. Replace the numbers and the unknown. Okay, cosine of theta. I have theta. It's 40. Cosine of 40. Oh, that didn't work out nicely. Cosine of 40. And adjacent. My adjacent was C. And my hypotenuse is 12. So I replace my unknown and my numbers for what I have. And now solve. Okay. Remember that little trick that we used before? That we can just talk about this being something over 1. So now, now I know that C will be divided by 1, and these two will multiply each other. So C is equal to 12 cosine of 40 
And when I plug that into my calculator, cosine, 12 cosine of 40 is 9.19. And there are no units. So that, but that's how we found side C that was missing. I have to make sure that my calculator is on degrees. Very important that your calculator is on degrees. And you know this by looking at your calculator, but also if you say that sine of 90, you plug it in, the answer should be 1. Okay, for sine of 90, the answer should be 1, and then you know you got your setting proper. If you have it in radians or in gradients, then you will get all the wrong answers even though you're plugging in the right keys. So let's look at two more examples and follow the same steps. So my first step was to say what I have and what I'm missing. So I've got an angle, theta. I have this side, which is a cross, which means it's opposite. And I've got this side, which is the hypotenuse. So OH. OH comes from sine. So I'm going to write down sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Now I'll replace them. So sine of 72 is equal to opposite, which is 18, divided by x. I'm going to do that little trick again. I'm going to say this is divided by 1. And now, across from x is sine 72. That's going to go dividing. Most people will make that mistake. So it's 18 times 1, which is just 18, divided by sine of 72. And that will give us an answer of 18.93. I have the units, it's meters, so I better write it down. It's very common for people to actually multiply these two instead of do one divided by the other. If you do that, you get an answer of 17.12. 17.12 will not make sense because this is the hypotenuse and it should be bigger than your opposite leg. So this one's 18.93, it makes sense, it's bigger than 18. Okay, so be careful when you're solving for something that's underneath. Just do the little trick that I'm showing you. Whatever is diagonally across, that goes dividing. Let's do this a little bit faster. So I've got a side, so I've got an angle. I have my opposite, or I have my adjacent, and I'm missing my opposite. O and A, it's for tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now I'll replace it, tangent of 20 is equal to opposite, which is h, or adjacent, which is 50. Okay, that's an easy one. If I divide by 1, divide it by 1, so this is just 50. Tangent of 20 is equal to h. And h is equal to... Oh, I didn't work that out in the calculator, so I'll let you plug that in. But make sure that we're using the units, because this is centimeters. So 50, 10, 20. I'm going to put the answer down. For word problems, here's something you're going to hear about angle of elevation and angle of depression. The key is that you're always measuring with respect to the horizontal. That, uh, in other words, angle of elevation goes from the horizontal up, that's the angle of elevation, and angle of depression goes from the horizontal down. Now, this makes perfect sense when it's like this, but when I give you a word problem, you will do something like this. And I say blah, blah, blah has the angle of elevation to the top of the tree, and you will have no trouble doing this. You're going to go, oh, yeah. there's the angle of elevation. But when I give you something like this, you'll be tempted to say, hey, where's the angle of depression? Well, the angle of depression, I'm going to do it right, is with respect to the horizontal. There's my horizontal. That's my angle of depression. You'll be tempted to do it with the triangle that you see. But that's not it. Now notice that the angle of elevation and the angle of depression should be the same because of the Z pattern. Okay? But every time you hear angle of depression, be very careful because it's super common that you put the answer here instead of on the right spot. And that was it for our first session on trigonometric ratios.